Get ready. It's time for a well-deserved break, Pittsburgh, with Heather Abraham and David Highfield. From the KDKA TV studios, it's Pittsburgh Today Live. Happy home opener, Bucko fans. Yeah, what a start to the season already it's been. The Pirates, they're on fire. They sure are. Yeah, they've won six of their first seven games on the road, and today they are home. Yeah, so we're taking a live look at PNC Park over there, and now we're taking a live look at Katie O'Malley. <laughs> She's a little bit revved up, and we are revved up too. She's going to be showing us everything that's new if you're heading to the ballpark. And look at the little pirate parrot. That's I know. How, up I don't know. It's kind of scary. <laughs> yeah, so, Watch I mean, out for him, Katie. Yeah, we don't know what he's up to. They have uh, some really <laughs> unique creations on their menu this year. Um, so I can't wait to hear all about that. The renegade dog. I, I've been seeing that. I. I think I mentioned it to you. I would really love to try it. it I tried it this morning delicious. on the morning news. How was it? It it was delicious. If you get a bite of everything that's on there, mm -hmm. there's pierogies and pickles and, and pot roast or pulled beef. I don't know what it is. But anyway, delicious. We're going to talk to Katie about that a little bit later on. So stay tuned because this whole hour we're going to be celebrating yeah. open the home opener. I know. It's yeah. very exciting. And I'm just, you know what? I'm glad to be back in where it's warm. Uh, because <laughs> yeah. cause this morning, yeah. I got to tell you, it was not, it did not feel spring-like at all. Uh -huh. And then this is when the rain moved in. And so we had, an, uh, fortunately, one of our producers, Craig, had an umbrella over there because I didn't even think to bring an umbrella. And then we're, we're literally moving everything, like all these lights and the tables and everything yeah. in between the two times that we were scheduled. To so avoid like, the rain. everybody's like all hands on deck. We're going to move, we're going to move the chairs, we're going to move like the way the microphone cords are getting wet. Uh -huh. It was like mayhem for a little bit, but we did it. We managed it. We have a great team over there and it really was fun. I was going to say when I walked in this morning, everyone, they were telling me, oh, David, you did such a great job over there. It was a <laughs> lot of fun. And I must say your lighting was spectacular. I know. Like <laughs> I got, I got to hand it to the crew because like, I don't know how they make this look good. Oh, no. they, somehow I'm going they... to tell you, it's not difficult. Oh, you're sweet. <laughs> yeah. You're sweet. Especially the hair, the hair, it was given this morning. <laughs> Anyhow, yeah. uh, we had fun over there. And truly, when you get over there and you're back in the ballpark, uh -huh. you just feel the excitement of the whole right, thing. Right. And so we're excited to share more of that with you later today. Katie has a lot up her sleeve later uh, on. <laughs> oh, good. All right, well, something else that's having an opening day is the new Dick Sporting Goods store at Ross Park Mall. Now, this is unlike anything else in our area. It opens today. It's their grand opening weekend, and we want to give you a PTL first peek. Yeah, so this is something that, like, I've driven up there, and if, you, if you've been to Ross Park Mall lately, just driving around <laughs> the outside. Have I been to Ross Park Mall <laughs> <All right>. lately? <laughs> you course. made your will weekly pilgrimage yeah. to Ross Park Mall. But really, take a look at some of the stuff in here. And what makes this store different is the services. Athletes can get their gear repaired or upgraded. Uh, there's so much to do. There's rock climbing wall, you just saw it. Outdoor turf uh, field, golf simulator, batting cages. Yeah, there's also a massive footwear deck with over 2,000 styles on display. Uh, so we're sending Katie there on Tuesday to try some of it out. And, and like you said, I've, I've been driving past this um, right. it, during the construction period, and I just, I, you know, you were like, what is happening right. over there? Because this is like not this a big, normal store. No, it's no. this huge dome, and I wasn't sure. It looked like it could, could have been an amusement park. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe yeah. there's a roller coaster. No, we don't. No, no. there's not a roller oh, coaster. That would be fun. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we should pitch that. I mean, I'm just saying, <laughs> if you have any extra space, <laughs> Maybe that's an idea, yeah. but we're going to get a tour of it, mm -hmm. uh, but this is the opening weekend for it if you want to check it out. Yeah. Well, speaking of roller coasters, uh, Kennywood opens in about two weeks, uh, but have you voted yet? 
is the question. We need to help out Kennywood. It's up for not one, but two yeah. national honors. I have to admit, I have not voted yet. I haven't either. So oh, we, we're we, bad. Th no, but this is why we want to remind all of you. Mm -hmm. So it's nominated again for Best Theme Park, and also Phantom's Revenge has been nominated for Best Roller Coaster. And this is the poll that USA Today does every year of the 10 best. Oh, so it's, it's official for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it's national. It's big time, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. So you can vote once today uh, through mid-April and the potato smash is their new bumper car ride this right. season have you have you heard about that well yeah in fact we were talking about how they were asking for names and mm -hmm. so the the viewers came up with names yeah. and they chose potato smash because it's the potato did. patch uh -huh. combined with bumper cars <laughs> so potato smash and so they're gonna have like big french fries in the back of the bumper cars and and cheat not actual french fries but like oh fiber I Glass, one, maybe while plastic. you're you're riding the ride, you right. can just, just kind of dip back in the back and, like, and get a right. little snack. <laughs> exactly. Oh. Well, maybe next time yeah. they'll make it. But back. anyway, <laughs> vote for Kennywood because you know it's our hometown amusement park. That's right. Yeah, that's good. All right, some kids in Canada trying to break a world record, and this would be so nerve-wracking. <laughs> They've set up thousands of craft mac and cheese boxes. Only to knock them all down like dominoes. Oh boy, yes. Yeah. So they hope it qualifies as the largest ever single serve food box domino topple. They set up 13. Thousand boxes. Oh my gosh. Oh, that sounds stressful. <laughs> it is. And yeah. so now, so these are 11 and 12 year olds, and mm -hmm. they're having the Guinness Book of World Records uh, take a look at this. But this is what they did. Because can you imagine if you were you had the 13,000th box? And you know, you're setting it up and, and you sneeze and then like, boom, it all goes. Oh, I would be so oh. upset and everyone would be mad at you. Yeah, everybody would be mad at you. That went into this. So they spaced them out is mm -hmm. what they did. They built little natural barriers so that that couldn't happen, which was very, very smart if you're going to do that. And by the way, all the mac and cheese goes to food banks up there in Canada. Yeah, it's making me hungry though. I liked box mac and cheese. Craft I really mac do. and cheese. I... That was like our Friday night. That and some broccoli was yeah. like our Friday night meal. And you mix it. Yeah, you mix it yeah. together. Mm -hmm. I was grew good. up on that. Very good. <laughs> all right. Friday free for all. Time to answer your questions. And we have a lot of really good questions mm -hmm. this week. The first one is from Pat. Yes, yeah, so this is about Selena's sandwich. And she wants to know what kind of pickles did you use? Are they sweet like bread and butter pickles or are they dill slices? I was watching this yesterday and I was thinking, that sandwich just sounds disgusting. You know what? It was much, much better than I thought it was going to be. Uh -huh. But it's pickles, it's peanut butter, it's ketchup, and then she had it on, on toasted bread. And I so I texted Selena, what kind of pickles were though? Were those? And they're dill pickles. Okay. If you want to give it a try. Dill pickles. Yeah. Her uh, Max family loves this sandwich. It was the ketchup that threw me off. Like the know. ketchup and the peanut butter the combination. Peanut butter and the pickles. Right. I think could work. That goes together. But the whole thing was. At, uh, surprisingly not bad. Okay. I'm not sure that's a great endorsement, <laughs> but <laughs> but anyway. It wasn't horrible, right? It was, yeah. No. Okay. It was actually kind of good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> not, and again, not a great endorsement, no. but honest. All right. Darla says, I missed Heather and why she's not there this week. Uh, is she getting ready to move? And that's why. Uh, well, she is getting ready to move. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's yeah. a million and one things going on. I talked to her this week. And uh, but she just uh, had a time off, yeah, like well-deserved right. time off. So she's back on Monday. Yeah, just took some yeah. vacation. So good. All right. So um, Bonnie, she really wants an answer to this. She yeah. is asking, what is an is it atmo atmospheric, atmospheric river? river? Atmospheric river. And, and could, could it happen, happen here? here in Pittsburgh, Ron? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, it, it does. So <laughs> atmospheric rivers, all they are, is a fancy way of saying. That you have a lot of moisture that's on top of you. So if we can go over, really, uh, I have set up on uh, our weather graphics. You can see this is satellite imagery that we're looking at right now. But if we change basically the wavelength that the uh, satellites are looking at, it, you start to get these darker colors right here. You see this right here? All of this. This is an atmospheric river, and that's where. A lot of rain is going to be possible if you get some other things like lip. One of the things that's kind of cool with this is that you start to see the last little bit because it's sitting over the Gulf of Mexico. It continues to pick up moisture. So you start to see those dark reds even going to even darker 
as you start to see it kind of picking up that moisture right there. So that's what an uh, atmospheric river is. Yes, if they do happen here. We did see one actually happening earlier this week. As it rolled through, we saw those record amounts of rain. In fact, we set a record when it came to precipitable yeah. water. What you look at at atmospheric rivers uh, for how much we saw uh, when they sent up one of those weather balloons, mm -hmm. we actually set a record on Tuesday into Wednesday for how much moisture we had. It was so much rain. Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, All right. And I feel smarter now. I do too. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. Yeah. We appreciate it. <laughs> Knowledge drop from Ron Smiley. I think I can yeah. get an A on the next paper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. We get quizzed on that. Yeah. We're going to be all right. Uh, Karen says, David, isn't really a question, but I wanted to tell you that I really like your, a more casual look when you don't wear a tie. You always look so good. Thank you, Karen. Yeah. yeah. I. You know what? Honestly, I mean, I. I feel comfortable in a tie, and, mm -hmm. and I wear it for the news, and I think it's important for me to wear it for the news because so many times there are stories that you just want to show a certain sign of respect because right, they're really right. serious stories. But for this show, I like being casual every once in a while. Mostly, it's like, do I remember to pack a change of clothes? Right. That's, <laughs> That's honestly <laughs> how it comes to be. Yeah, so, whether I'm casual. I think that was Wednesday when I saw you, and you're like, Mikey. I'm taking off my tie. I'm like, oh boy, David's gone rogue. <laughs> I've gone no. rogue. Yeah, it looks yeah. it looks good. Um, but see, uh, Paul is asking, did you get a new TV yet, David? No, I did not. <laughs> Thanks for asking, Paul. You know what? Our TV is so on its last leg, and we're just waiting to see what happens next. There are green lines down the middle of it. There, when it when it turns to a black screen, there are spots. It looks like stars. It looks like you're staring wow. at the universe. And you know, and now we're wondering what will happen next. Do you just want to purchase we just, another no, we just TV? Have a, I don't know. Is part it? of me doesn't want to spend. Part of, I'm a cheapskate. <laughs> I'm frugal. No, but you know what? If I win the Powerball, mm -hmm. I would buy it. And okay. That, in fact, that is Faith's <laughs> question. She says, "Do you all pitch in and buy Powerball tickets? What would you do if you won? Because tomorrow night's drawing is 1.23 billion dollars." Wow. I, I always say this, and I don't know people. Don't necessarily agree with me. I wouldn't want to win that much money. I, it's just, it's so much pressure, and then everyone yeah. would know that you you had all of it, and would they, you know, family members right. that you've never even heard of would be calling you. I, I just co-hosts would be texting you like, yeah. "Hey, Mikey, can you buy me a new TV?" <laughs> <laughs> like, who might this be? Yeah, I, I don't know. It's just. I mean, I'm sure I could use some of that money, but it's just too much. I would be willing to try. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but <laughs> who knows? We'll see who wins, if anyone wins this weekend. Yeah.